Hey everyone, Selena for Who is Jesus Today? How's it going out there, everyone? How is it going for you today? Maybe you want to just drop a comment and say how how it's going. And if you have a prayer request, uh, you can put that there too. So, um, it's been a couple of days and I, you know, I was thinking about opening up the topic more about truth. Um, because there's a whole lot of talk out there about truth, what is truth, what's not truth, uh, the potential of us uh, actually uh, losing our freedoms more and more to express truth, our truth, the truth. And there's also a lot of controversy about what's true and what's not. And what's true for one person may not be true for another. So truth can also be subjective. Um, it depends on the relevancy and there and that's just that that's just going to be true um, in different scenarios. But I want to say as, as uh, many of you know on this channel, what is my truth? What do I stand for spiritually as my truth? And that is that uh, Jesus is to cure for the world. Uh, there is only a salvation in Jesus and that uh, he is the way the truth and the life so I want to establish that who I believe in is Jesus now I do understand that not everyone accepts this as truth but this is what I say is the truth it is my truth I believe that the Bible is the authority of God it is a truthful and again it is my truth it is my source of life comfort I find peace in the scriptures some may think well if I open the Bible it's going to tell me uh, already what you know right how wrong you are some of the things you should not be doing uh, that's a great indication to let you know though that why would a human write a story and put in there all of the things that are not right with God and at the same time also put down what will be the consequences and the judgment of God. At the same time, it is a love, a message to the world that God loves the world and he sacrificed and that uh, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. This is, yes, this is the uh, foundation of what we call the Christian faith. There's different, um, I know, uh, doctrines, and branches but we do have to begin on that foundation don't we that's the truth is it not you're gonna hear something a uh, beeping for a few minutes it has to be fixed and just really ignore it because I'm not gonna stop of the video so as you know life happens <laughs> okay and life can happen while you're making your video so at, the, at this time, I'm going to let life uh, happen because, yeah, this is um, a situation that's here. And, yeah, you don't have to just pay it any mind. It's past. Okay. So, now, that's truth because that is uh, what you just heard. That sound, you actually heard it, right? No one has to convince you whether it's true or not. So, as I was saying, God's Word is a love a letter also to the world John 3 16 I uh, will uh, put up some scriptures down in the link and I will also uh, put up some uh, verses about what does the Bible say about truth okay so the truth is very important and and today again uh, and the heightened a uh, climate of social media and how it's so easy for there to be misinformation out there about anything or anyone uh, there is a hunger for the truth but at the same time I think people are also a repulsive at times when they do have the truth right in front of them and they don't want to accept it as truth now I'm gonna say for me I've been like um, a growing up throughout my life even as a child more of a person that finds it hard to really uh, believe that what someone is is telling me is the truth 
So I know I have I, I have a, a more of a, a skeptical uh, personality, and some of the proof of that is even when I was around, say, two, a toddler. I, I never forget this. I know you think I'm, I, I'm, you know, I'm not that ancient, but it, I, the fact that I still actually recall this, that my mom said, uh, Santa is coming to bring, uh, you know, gifts. Uh, down the chimney he's coming from somewhere and I, I, I remember saying this and I was very intentional there's no Santa mommy and daddy is the Santa <laughs> well I spoke the truth <laughs> and that truth shocked her yeah it did but it was the truth so um, let's also look at truth now in the sense of relevancy so uh, truth is also embedded in language. So if someone is speaking a language that you have no idea about, then it doesn't matter what they're saying, no matter how true it is, it really has no essence of for you. It's not going to be true. Like if I say, um, Pan con mantequilla! Pan con mantequilla! And you go, what? Pan con mantequilla, pan con mantequilla. So, uh, for anyone out there, that is a Spanish, as, as many of you know. And Spanish is popular in the United States. Uh, it's taught in schools. We hear it a lot um, in our communities around the United States. And when you go into a restaurant or shopping, you know, you start to see the foods there. You start to recognize what they mean. So, you know... Um, Pan con mantequilla is um, bread and butter, which is a pretty a popular thing to have with a cup of cafe con leche, a cup of a coffee, okay, and milk. So that has, there's truth uh, 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 to that. If I say that that means what I just said, okay, pan, pan con mantequilla is butter, is a bread and butter, but if, I, if I'm in some part of the world where there's just, where uh, uh, the, the people are not, say, familiar with Spanish or English, uh, that has no relevancy to them. That, 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 is, that is not any kind of truth for them to, say, hold on to, because uh, they don't know what it means, so now you can't even uh, translate it. If you want to translate it to English, translate it to Spanish, if you're in a place where both of those languages are unknown and it's hard to go any any place in in the world where there's not some degree of English but there are places yes it is a world language but there are places still on the world's map where it would not be understood at all and so when someone doesn't understand the language it doesn't matter how much truth you're saying this is why Bible translations is so important and it's dear to my heart you can give someone God's word the truth but if they uh, don't understand what you're saying at all how can it become relevant to them you see so for those out there that are involved in this uh, I, I've been made aware of this and I, I have um, a book up there God spoke Tibetan because it was really a crucial that the people at that time of Tibet had God's word in their own language. There are still a people in a report to the world where not their language that they use all the time isn't written. So uh, without language, the understanding of it, or the ability to translate it, uh, you won't have that nugget of truth. You can't really have that. And so that's why, uh, in that case, truth has to also be based on uh, the relevancy and, and can it be explained and understood, interpreted, and translated. Okay. Um, for those out there who need to use ASL, right? So you have to give them the truth within a language that they can understand, which would be ASL. So I just want to say that truth is something that we need. We need to hold on to it. We need to cling to it. But what is actually truth sometimes? 
So um, if you see someone doing something, if you catch someone in the act, then it's truth. I mean, if you see them doing something, then you don't have to be convinced. So when you see something with your eyes, uh, you can say what you have seen. But if you didn't see it for yourself, if someone comes and tells you what they have seen, and you haven't seen it for yourself, based on that a person, if you, how much you know them, their credibility, you may be convinced and you will believe what they have told you they have seen to be truth. But a question, is it really your truth yet? How can it be your truth if you yourself have not seen it, haven't witnessed it? You have to hold it loosely. Whenever people tell us anything they've seen out there, uh, if we haven't seen it ourselves, if we cannot say, well, I've actually seen that happen, uh, then it's going to be he say, she say, they say, but however, uh, you won't be able to fully say that you have seen this to be true yourself. That's why what we hear, we have to be careful. Now, here's another thing I want to say. Sometimes people say, well, we need to know the truth. Yes, we do. But once we do know the truth, what happens next, everyone? What will we do with the truth matters just as much as it would if we didn't really know the truth. The difference comes when you know the truth. And now what will you do with the truth next? Okay, because the actions that are taken, right? It's often going to be uh, based on how much that person is willing to sacrifice and what is willing to cost them for the truth. You see? And so there are some societies, though, doesn't matter how much you have the truth and know the truth, when there's a lack of, of freedom, concerns about one's uh, safety, and, say, a tyranny, then uh, you may have the truth, hold the truth, but you may not be willing to release that truth out into a society or to tell others due to the consequences. So truth is always going to require at some point in time for action. And depending on what that uh, truth is, it can cost you. It can cost people greatly. It can cost them their lives. So we have to keep that in mind. But what will we do once we know the truth? Don't just say, I want the truth. Let's get the truth. But no action is as if it's dead. So uh, we have to decide what will we do with the truth. What will we do with the truth about Jesus, God's word? Um, we have to be aware and open to and strong enough to endure that many will reject the truth, the Lord of Jesus, but people will reject things that you are also trying to claim as truth or personal truth. So, the truth can be sometimes easily proven, and sometimes it cannot be easily proven at all. Again, whatever is the truth, and when the truth is out there, the actions that are taken is going to matter for those out there who say, well, I'm all for the truth. Yeah, we should be, but uh, what happens next? Depending on what is the truth, it can also cause a chaos and many to act irrationally as well. So, I like to say to the church, let's not underestimate the power of praying first. Even when we have the truth, when we have come to know something, and our personal spirit of influence and the church and our world and our leadership and government that there's times where you may not be able to just speak what you know yet but I would say first even after learning of the truth sometimes the truth about people and our family that we don't want to know or truth about a spouse what do you do I'm saying let's pray first the power of prayer can go beyond the borders of tyranny, a suppressive 
environments and our unvoiced prayers as well if you are locked away and you can hardly even get your words out that I believe there's even silence in the private prayers that are prayed in our heart so the truth I would say it's hard to come by I say it's easier to come across the truth though than to find someone that's willing to do something about it once they do know the truth because the truth will set us free so I've gone over a, a topic that I think has multiple and multiple uh, layers uh, to it I'm clear about what is my uh, biblical stance and foundation of, of, of truth and my personal uh, beliefs uh, spiritually but I'm also open to understand that truth also can be uh, subjective right someone says well that house looks better than that house well now that's going to be a truth for you not, not really true for uh, someone else truth when it comes down to language if you don't know the language you have no clue what someone is saying then that truth is not going to mean anything that's why we do need the uh, translations we need to have a uh, God's Word a uh, translated I uh, I uh, I know I am also a fan of a uh, King James and you a uh, King James a version um, but I will say this too that um, still if someone doesn't speak the English language at all then they're not going to be able to get the truth of God's Word in the English uh, language in any version so this is why truth depends on the relevancy of of the language being understood by who you're trying to convey it to and when we have the truth what do we do what's next because if you do nothing with the truth it's as if you never had the truth so it's a call for action but sometimes before we act because we may not know quite what to do next there may be some um, opposition some obstruction in our way we can call on the name of the Lord so to wrap it up with the truth let's not forget the power of prayer and knowing how to handle the truth what to do next what steps we should take in the Lord when you don't know what to do that's fine call on the name of the Lord but just remember it's not enough just to talk about truth what will we do next once we know the truth and the truth will set us free thank you everyone uh, for listening to my chat today on truth I wanted to visit you all out there with this and yes sorry for the interruption um, okay life does happen <laughs> you can like and subscribe until next time thank you uh, for listening Shalom